Jesus Christ performed all of these various things to the point to where he's saying, you know what, if you can't receive this after, after all I've done, you don't, you don't, you, there's, never, there's no more forgiveness offered. This is where people become reprobate. But um, I digress. I don't want to get too far off into the rabbit trail. Go back to Mark chapter 1. Because what I want to point out here and what, what we're going to look at there's three aspects that I want to I point out about these stories of Jesus Christ healing people. And these are all, all these stories are representative of ultimately the healing power that you receive through salvation. But I, I want to point out three distinct um, things about, about the way that Jesus healed. And the first one I want to point out is that it's immediate. This wasn't a slow healing. It didn't take a process. It didn't take a week. It didn't take even hours. Um, you're in Mark chapter 1. Look at verse number 30. Bob records, But Simon's wife's mother lay sick of a fever, and anon they tell him of her. And he came and took her by the hand and lifted her up, and immediately the fever left her, and she ministered unto them. We're going to see that word immediately quite a bit during the healing of Jesus Christ. Jump down to verse number 40. And there came a leper to him, beseeching him, and kneeling down to him, and saying unto him, If thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. And Jesus, moved with compassion, put forth his hand, and touched him, and saith unto him, I will be thou clean. And as soon as he had spoken, immediately the leprosy departed from him, and he was cleansed. Flip over to chapter 2. Look at verse number 9. We're going to go through these pretty quickly through the book of Mark. Uh, verse number 9, chapter 2. Whether is it easier to say the sick of the palsy, thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say arise and take up thy bed and walk, but that ye may know. You see, again, more proof of Jesus' ministry saying, you know what? Because he had already said, thy sins be forgiven thee. When they, when they lifted down, they broke up the roof, they lifted down this man that was sick of the palsy, he saw their faith and he said, son, thy sins be forgiven thee. And the, and the people that were standing around, some of the Pharisees were like, who does this guy think he is? Only God could forgive sins. So he's making another proof. He's saying, okay, you want, the, you want proof of, of who I am? You want proof that I actually can forgive sins? He says, but that you may know that the Son of Man hath power on earth to forgive sins. He saith to the sick of the palsy, I say unto thee, arise and take up thy bed and go thy way into thine house. And immediately he arose, took up the bed and went forth before them all. Insomuch that they were all amazed and glorified God saying, we never saw it on this fashion. Now, we have so many accounts of this. So many accounts of this. If this was all just a fraud, don't you think it would, it would be a little bit more widely known that this was a fraud during that time? Now, we know that there are people, I mean, the Jews claim that, that it was a fraud. There is that claim still out there, and we know that that claim was made, and it, st it still exists today. But if it truly, I mean, if it truly was just a charlatan, with, with, look at the details of these events. There is no way that you would be able to fake all of this stuff that happened. It's, it's impossible. I mean, I, there's, there's so much evidence there. You say, you know, look, you have to take it on faith. You say, well, I wasn't there. I know you weren't there. But it still needs to be, you know, it needs to be taken on faith. But there's, there are, it's a reasonable faith. It's not just totally blind and just unreasonable. There have been plenty of witnesses to these events. And that when we go preach the gospel, we're witnessing our event with Jesus Christ, our salvation, we're witnessing who Jesus Christ is to other people. Jump over to chapter 5. We're going to look at another, another event here. But notice, immediately the fever left me. Immediately the leprosy departed from him. Immediately he arose and took up his bed. Look, that guy had palsy. There was no cure for that. A leper, there was no cure for leprosy. And the other fever, we started off with just a fever. You say, okay, well, that was just a fever. Maybe that was a coincidence, right? No, it wasn't, but <laughs> we're, get, we're getting a little bit more severe here. You go, you go from the fever to leprosy to someone who had palsy. Uh, Mark chapter 5, verse 25. And a certain woman which had an issue of blood 12 years and had suffered many things of many physicians and had spent all that she had and was nothing bettered, but rather grew worse when she had heard of Jesus, came in the press behind and touched his garment. For she said, if I may but touch his clothes, but I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. And straightway, that means immediately, straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up and she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. Immediately. She hears about Jesus, she goes to Jesus, and she's healed. 
She's been to the world. She's been to the smartest doctor. She spent all of her money trying to get her issue fixed. Nobody could figure out. Nobody can do it. Jesus didn't even have to do anything. All she did was, was, was have faith, reach out, touch his, his garment, and she was healed.